It was gentlemen after long absence. Seven years to be exact. During which time I was studying in Europe. That I returned to my people. I learned much. And much passed me by. But that's another story. The important thing that I returned with a great yearning for my people in that small village at the bank of the Nile. For seven years I had longed for them, had dreamed of them. And it was an extraordinary moment when I at last found myself standing among them. They rejoiced at having me back and made a great fuss. And it was not long before I felt though a piece of ice were melting inside of me. As though I were some frozen substance on which the sun has shone. That life warmth of tribe which I had lost for a time in the land. Whose fishes die of the cold. My ears had become used to their voices. My eyes grown accustomed to their forms. Because of having thought so much about them during my absence, something rather folk rose up between them and me the first instant I saw them. But the folk leered and I woke. On the second day of my arrival, in my familiar bed, in the room whose wall had witnessed the travel incident of my life in childhood and on onset of adolescence. I listened intensely to the wind that indeed was a sound well known to me. A sound which in our village possessed a mere whisper. The sound of the wind passed through the palm tree is different from where it passed through field of corn. I heard the cooning of turtle dove, and I looked through the window at the palm tree standing in the courtyard of our house, and I knew that all was still well with life. I looked at its strong straight trunk, and its root that is strung down into the ground, at the green branches hanging down loosely over its top. And I experienced a feeling of assurance. I felt not like a storm sweep feather, but like a palm tree, a being with a background, with roots, with a purpose. My mother brought tea, my father having finished his prayers, a recitation from Quran came along. Then my sister and brothers came and we all sat down and drank tea and talked as we have done ever since my eye opened on life yes life is good and the world as unchanged as ever suddenly I recollected having seen a face I did not know among those who had been there to meet me I asked about him described him to them. A man of medium height, of around 50 or slightly older, his hair thick and going gray, breedless and with a mustache slightly smaller than those worn by men in the village. A handsome man. That would be Mustafa, said my father. Mustafa who? Was he one of the villagers who would have gone abroad and had now returned? My father said that Mustafa was not a local man but a stranger who had come here five years ago. He bought himself a farm, built a house and married Mahmoud's daughter. A man who kept himself to himself 
and about whom not much was known.